Hi guys, welcome to another math video with Ms. Motala. Today we're talking about angle properties of parallel lines. So before I get started, a little disclaimer, this video has a lot of dense math vocabulary. So you really do need to pay attention to the words that I'm using because they're gonna help you through this whole process. You're gonna learn a lot of new vocab. So please um, either write it down or somehow make sure that you're reviewing it because you're gonna need this vocabulary to answer the questions and work through the stuff that we're gonna be working on. So to start off, let's break down the first word there that is there, and that is parallel. So what is parallel? Parallel means when you have parallel lines, there are two lines or more that are traveling in the same direction. Parallel lines never meet, so they never intersect. In the last video, I talked about intersecting lines. Intersecting lines are lines that cross each other. So when we're talking about parallel lines, we're talking about lines that will never ever cross each other. They will continue to go onward. At no point will these two lines intersect. So again, parallel lines can be in any direction. And in math, we show parallel lines are parallel by drawing in these um, arrows here. This tells me that mathematically these lines are parallel, meaning that they will not be intersecting. Okay, so these are parallel lines. And now I'm gonna show you another vocab word. So that was this word, parallel line. So now we have something called a transversal. Okay, so there we go, a transversal line. Okay. And I hope you can see that on there. So a transversal line, a line that crosses two or more parallel lines or two or more lines. So a line that goes right across any two parallel lines. So again, if I had drawn my parallel lines this way, and I'm showing you they're parallel, a transversal line could have been going that way. So a transversal line cuts through two or more lines. So again, transversal line and parallel lines. Now let's get into the angles that we're talking about for today. So the first angle, let me use this drawing here since I have it, is called a corresponding angle. Okay. So it's called a corresponding angle or corresponding angles. Corresponding angles are a pair of equal angles on the same side of the transversal line. So if I look at that, if I look at this diagram here, I'm trying to look for, so two angles that are um, equal angles on the same side of the trans line, the transverse line. So here's my transverse line, okay? So the two angles I'm gonna mark here are A and B. And if you notice, so here is my transversal line or trans, and so on, they're on the same side of my transverse line and they are equal. So angle A is equal to angle B. So again, they're on the same side. And another way to remember this is it forms the letter F. So when you see that letter F being formed, you know you're looking at a transversal line. So let's look at another one. We have one that goes this way. And I have a line that cuts through. I was to label this A and B. And again, if I look at it, they're on the same side of my transversal line and it forms the letter F. These two angles will have the same um, degree because they are, they are equal angles, okay? So corresponding angles. And that's the first one we're looking at. The next one we're looking at again I've got my parallel lines I've got my transversal line and the one I'm looking at now is an alternate angle So alternate angles. And alternate angles are equal angles formed between parallel lines. So they're equal angles formed between parallel lines, 
but on opposite sides of the transversal, okay? So in between the parallel lines, but on opposite sides. So if I look here, in between my parallel lines, but on opposite sides, okay? So let me mark this. So if I had A and B, so again, they're in between the parallel lines, but on opposite sides of my transversal. And you can see that there, okay? And now the other little trick here to remember that is it will form the letter Z. So when you see that, you will see the letter Z being formed. They are on opposite sides of the transversal, but in between the parallel lines, okay? Those are alternate angles. And again, we're gonna to try to remember these definitions because they're gonna help us out as we work through some. And the last one that I'm gonna show you is my, sorry. So this one is called my interior angle. And interior, when you try to guess what that means, it means something that is inside, right? Like if you were to say I was painting the interior of my house, I'd be painting the interior, the inside of my house. And so in this case, the interior angles are the angles that are formed in between the parallel lines, but on the same side as my transverse, okay? The value of these angles is not equal, but the value of these angles equal 180 degrees. So let's mark them. I have A and B. So again, they're formed in between the parallel lines and on the same side as my transverse. And the letter they form is a C or a backward C, forward C, just depends on what you're looking at, okay? So they're gonna, it's kind of forming the letter C. And these ones are not equal to one another, like the other two were. So when we have corresponding angles, they're equal to one another. When we have alternate angles, they're equal to one another. These ones are not equal to one another. They equal 180 degrees. Okay, so the sum of these interior angles will always equal 180 degrees, okay? So again, we went through that very quickly. So um, again, you copied down some of that information so you have something to refer to. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly do a little sketch here so we can use it as we work through the question that I'm gonna put on for us. So again, if they are on the same side, this is my interior. And okay, this is my interior and this is A plus B equals 180. If they are on opposite sides, so in between the parallel lines, but on opposite sides of my, um, my transverse line, it's the alternate angle and alternate angles are equal to one another. So in this case, they're gonna be this, the um, opposite to one another. This is alternate. This is interior and the last one we looked at. Oh, actually this was the first one we looked at, I think. Would be my corresponding. And um, let's mark it here. These are my corresponding ones and means they're on the same side as the interior, but on opposite sides of the parallel line and these ones um, are equal to one another. Uh, okay, so there we go. We've got our three angles. We're gonna use these as we answer the question. So I'm just gonna turn the camera a little now to the question I have up here. So now here is my angle that I've drawn. Hopefully you can see that clearly. I've labeled it with letters and in the last video I talked about labeling and understanding labeling of angles. And again, when they're telling you to find a certain angle, it will say angle with three letters. The letter in the center is the actual angle that you're solving for. So in this case, it says angle B, E, F. So I go to my letters here and I go, okay, B, E, F. 
here's the letter B, connect my dots to E, connect my dot, oops, sorry, I went the wrong way, connect my dots to F. So the first angle I'm solving is this one, okay? If I'm solving for this angle, I know the value of only this angle. So I go back to this and I say, okay, I know the value of this line, this angle, and this one. These are my parallel lines, that's my transversal. So it's on the same side as the transversal, in between the parallel lines, and I say, which one does it fall under? It is my interior angle, and I know interior angles, the sum of these two angles are gonna be valued at 180. So I say, I'm gonna label this x104 plus x equals 180, and again, we're using our algebra to solve. So I go 104 minus 104 because I need to get rid of that to get my value of my variable with the opposite operation. And whatever I do to one side, I must do the other for a balance equation. X equals 76 degrees. So I just solved for X. So this one equals 76 degrees and I can actually write that in here. So. I solve for that one. Now I go to the next one. It says I'm looking for angle B, E, G. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to my drawing. Say B, where is B? Oh, sorry. B to E to G. Okay, so I'm looking for this one. Now there's actually two ways of doing this, and we can refer back to the other um, video if you want to, but I'll show you both. So I look at this one and I say, okay, I know the value of this angle. I'm looking for the value of this one. They're on the opposite side of the transverse, but inside the uh, parallel lines. Opposite side of the transverse, in between the parallel lines. It's an alternate angle. Alternate angles, it says that they are equal to one another. So this angle and this angle are gonna be equal to one another. So we can say angle B, is equal to angle E, therefore it equals 104. Now let's say I didn't see that right away, but I know something else. I know that this angle here is a supplementary angle. And I know that supplementary angles are valued at 180. So I can say 76 plus E equals 180. And then I can start solving. So 76 minus 76 plus E equals 180 minus 76, and therefore E equals 104. So I solve for E a different way. So if you don't remember the name, you still know a supplementary angle equals 180, and you also know that a, cor um, a corresponding angle equals, not course, sorry, your supplementary angle equals 180. So you can always use that as a process of thinking. So now, next one, it tells us that we are solving for angle C, I'm gonna get another color, we're solving for C, B, D. So we're solving for this angle here. And again, I can say, well, I know that these are intersecting lines. So if I forget and don't look at any of this here, so from the last video, we talked about intersecting lines. We know this is intersecting lines. We know that whatever the value of this is gonna be the same value as that. So I could easily just do that and say, if this is 104, this is also gonna be 104. Because you know that. But let's use what we learned today to solve for this. So I know that the value of E here is 104. I also know that now, if I look at any of these values, I say, well, this one is on the same side as the transversal, but on the opposite side of the parallel lines. And if we look at it, it forms a letter F right there, which is a, um, a corresponding angle. And if it's a corresponding angle, we know that the value of E and B is 
going to be the same. Therefore, it is 104 degrees. Okay, so again, a lot of vocabulary. And with this, um, with this stuff, you, still, you have to really use a lot of visualization and try to see the angles. Sometimes it's easier, like I showed you, to use a piece of paper, cover up some of it, so you can try to focus on the angle that you're looking for because you know some of the other rules that we kind of talked about in the other video. So I hope that helps. Um, again, go back and review all of the vocabulary. That way you are successful.